We begin the second part of our presentation with uh, Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome back to the second part of our presentation on the qualities of the minister. In this part, we want to consider the spiritual aspect of formation, the spiritual formation. Uh, the Catholic minister, ecclesial minister, is a man or woman who lives a life hid with Christ in God. What does it mean in a concrete? What does it mean to live a life in Christ? Live a life hid in Christ with God. So we are going to consider the spiritual aspect of this formation. For a Catholic, for a Christian minister, he is immersed in the life of the Holy Trinity. And we cannot enter into the life of the Father, Son, and the Spirit except through the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. That is Jesus. So the first thing is to begin to believe and be baptized and thus become united with Christ. Christian life is living the mystery of the life in spirit as a child of God. It is less about social ethics at the service of others. Uh, uh, no, it is living the life in the Trinity. Communion with Jesus is lived in a form of friendship with Jesus. Uh, like the wine and the branches, <clears throat> through faith we are united with Christ. So it is essential, it is uh, essential content is to help the person to learn to live in intimate and ceasing union with God the Father through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, says Optatum Totius number 8 on the priestly formation, the document on priestly formation of the Second Vatican Council. Hence, it is about growth in relationship and communion with God. It is communion with Jesus Christ. It is a work of the Holy Spirit. It is the total submission of one's life to the Holy Spirit, love towards the Father, and trustful attachment to the Church. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you, you, they, you will listen to them, that is, the, the leaders of the Church. So attachment to Christ, attachment to the Father and Spirit becomes attachment to the church. <clears throat> In this uh, life, we are constant seekers of God. Spiritual life is dominated by what is said in Latin, querere deum, that is the search for God, the search for Christ, and finding him to introduce him to others. You might recall the two disciples who were sent by John, who the love of God, and they followed him, they stayed with him. And then after that, after having found Jesus, they introduced uh, introduced Peter and uh, Nathaniel, etc., to Jesus. Uh, therefore, when we find Jesus, we also will feel the need of introducing him to others. The third part, to be covered, to find Jesus, is a part of the listening to the Word of God, meditation. Of course, meditation on the Word of God, training in prayer, in silence, active participation in the Church's holy mysteries, if possible, daily Eucharist, participation in the liturgy of hours, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, frequenting the sacrament of penance, educating oneself in the virtue of penance, sense of asceticism, asceticism means practice, asceticism is a self-discipline that a person acquires through practice, especially management of his will, his passions. Interior discipline, spirit of sacrifice, self-denial, acceptance of hard work and cross, these are all participation in the church's life. Then, seeking Christ in people <clears throat> and situations of life. Jesus is present. He is risen. He encounters us and he will speak to us in various ways, especially through people, to, through the situations. And we need to be seekers 
constant seekers of God's word. And then next aspect, that we must possess and live the theological virtues. Possess. Why we say possess? Because it is induced into us through the Holy Spirit when we, were, we began to believe, when we were baptized. And the virtue of faith, the virtue of hope, the virtue of love, charity. They are called theological because they originate in God. They are gifts of God to those who believe and their object is God. The goal, it is directed towards God. I believe in God. I hope in God. I love God. Faith, hope and love remain, says St. Paul, these three. But the greatest of these is love. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12, we read about that. Then we must possess the cardinal, among the moral virtues, the cardinal virtues in a special way. The virtue of prudence, the virtue of justice, the virtue of temperance, the virtue of fortitude. These four are called cardinal virtues. I'm going to explain much more in depth what the theological and cardinal virtues are in this moment. I just want to name them. These virtues have to be acquired. They are acquired virtues and hence moral virtues by exercise of the will. Acquired virtues, of course, through the grace of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, they, we acquire them better through cooperation with God's grace. <coughs> Sorry for that. <coughs> now, the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, they put us in connection with God, contact with God, enabling us to know and love Him in a supernatural way through faith, hope, and charity. And the moral virtues help us much more in our relationship with our neighbor. The moral virtues concern our self-control and our relationship with others. And we know unless we love God uh, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength, then the theological virtues are needed for that. And our neighbor as ourselves, the moral virtues are needed for that. We cannot be saved. So moral virtues concern our self-control and our relationship with others. They are means towards the ultimate end, especially the end of loving our neighbor. As the theological virtues unite us with God, the moral virtues remove the obstacles to that union and assist us in the love of neighbor. We, love, we reach God through loving neighbor. There are four general cardinal virtues that we mentioned under which all other moral virtues, such as humility, gentleness, charity, etc., the charity I mean, the love of neighbor, uh, may be classified. Prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. They are called cardinal. Cardis in uh, Latin means the hinge, uh, hinge, or like the heart, the hinge, the, from where the other virtues move. So they are hinges of the other virtues. If a person does not possess the cardinal virtues, the other virtues will not work. We will not be able to operate it properly. But the practice of the moral virtues are motivated by charity. They become meritorious. Charity, there is love of God. And means of growing in that union with God and in the service of neighbor. So what is faith? Now, let, yeah, we are going to consider each of those uh, theological virtues and cardinal virtues. Faith is a supernatural virtue whereby, under the inspiration and assistance of grace, uh, notice the uh, uh, section highlighted in red, we believe, we accept it as true, those things revealed by God. Uh, we believe there means to accept as true, those things revealed by God to be true. Not because the intrinsic truth of these things has been perceived by the natural light of reason, but because of the authority of God himself revealing them, or the authority of the church uh, that God gave to the church, who can neither, the God, who can neither deceive nor be deceived, says Vatican I. So I accept the revealed truth because God has spoken through the church. That is the word. 
By faith, therefore, we entrust uh, our whole self freely to God, offering the full submission of our intellect and will to God who reveals, and freely ascending to the truth revealed by him, the gifts of understanding and knowledge uh, given to the intellect, perfect faith. And this faith, and against the faith there are two sins, the sin of heresy and the sin of doubt. Doubting faith is sinful. We may have difficulties in understanding faith, but doubt what God has revealed is sinful. And from that doubt, heresy uh, and, uh, and apostasy can flow. Now, the next theological virtue is the virtue of hope. What is the virtue of hope? It is primarily confidence in the soul. It is a divinely infused virtue by which, with a certain confidence, relying on God's goodness and promises, we expect to attain eternal life, and we expect that God will grant me the means to attain it. So there is a confidence of reaching heaven and the confidence of having the instruments, the means to reach heaven. One lives his Christian life with the unshakable support of God, on whom we rely, on whom we rely. Of course, there is a difference between human hope and supernatural virtue of hope. Eh? The human hope is a hope that tomorrow will be well, the coronavirus will be gone. But the uh, theological virtue of hope is that God will never abandon me in the midst of the coronavirus or in the midst of my pr problems. I will be helped to go through my temptations and difficulties until I reach him. So while faith gives light, understanding to the intellect, hope gives confidence to the intellect, to the heart. There is the confidence. And the sins against the theological virtue of hopes are two, presumption that I presume I will be saved yeah, without doing anything, or despair that God will count my sins against me and I will not be saved, I may not be saved. Both are sinful. The next virtue is the virtue of charity, the love of God. It is a supernatural infused virtue, infused by God into the will, by which we love God. So the movement is towards God at the level of the will. For uh, love God for himself above all things and ourself and neighbor for his sake. It is a queen of all virtues. Uh, charity makes easier every effort sweetens every sacrifice because we uh, love to do the things that we love. We can easily do the things we love. When love is infused in the soul, we find it easy to grow in prayer and in uh, practice of virtues. It is the heart and soul of prayer as well as the motivating force of the spirit of mortification. Now we come to the, the, the cardinal virtues, the virtue of prudence. What is that virtue? It is an infused virtue rooted in the practical intellect, enabling the individual to make correct moral decisions. And every decision must be made from the viewpoint of one's ultimate end, not, uh, the, not the viewpoint of not getting into trouble, into troubles, or uh, what would others say, and I'm afraid about the public opinion. No, no, no. From the point of view of the ultimate end, what I'm going to do, uh, will it help me to attain my salvation, which will glorify God, will it help others to reach heaven? It embodies a real participation in the wisdom of Christ. It is the most important of all the moral virtues, for it is a guide of our entire moral life. St. Thomas called it the rudder virtues. Rudder is that the instrument, that part of a ship that directs the ship in the ocean, in the waters. So, virtue of prudence direct our steps. Virtue of justice. It is an infused virtue that inclines one to respect the rights of others, whether gods or our fellow human beings, and render to them what is due to them. Uh, it sees the right of others from the viewpoint of reason, enlightened by faith and elevated by charity. Now, the next is fortitude. Fortitude helps to control our inner life our emotions, our desires and fears, and persevere in face of difficulties. It strengthens the soul to sustain and overcome the difficulties and dangers. 
and keeps us from giving up when the going is hard. It helps us to steer our middle course between fear and between daring. Lacking control, these two emotions, meaning fear and daring, can degenerate into cowardice on the one hand and foolhardiness on the other. The ultimate act of fortitude is to lay down one's life in martyrdom. And the last is temperance. It is a supernatural virtue that moderates one's desires for pleasures of the senses and keeps them within the limits of reason illumined by faith. It prefers in a special way to the moderation, it refers to the in a special way to the moderation of the pleasures of taste and touch. While fortitude strengthens, temperance moderates. Between these two virtues, our entire inner life is properly ordered. And finally, to summarize, to reach life's goal, the most important condition is that we are headed in the right direction. The theological virtues accomplish this, directing us. God word. But to reach our destination, we must also have prudence to choose the best means to, of getting there, justice to fulfill our obligations to God and man on the way, fortitude to overcome the difficulties we encounter, and temperance not to be sidetracked on the way by the passing pleasures and satisfactions. And therefore, spiritual life consists in living the life of grace, sanctifying grace and actual graces with the help of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and infused virtues, the theological virtues and moral virtues. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without entertainment. We shall have a third part of this video.